Microplastics happens to be a really hot topic in the scientific community. They've been finding them everywhere. They've been finding them in the air, in human tissue, in the water, in the sediment. We know that they are ending up from our kitchen and restaurant uh, tabletops into our waterways and then into our human bodies. Blood and tissue are turning up with microplastics within them. The idea of the Microplastics Project has given my students in particular an opportunity to follow through on science from beginning to end. It's given them an opportunity to utilize the facilities here at Brookhaven in ways that we haven't before through SPARC. SPARC, which stands for Student Partnerships for Advanced Research and Knowledge, is a collaboration between Brookhaven National Laboratory and Long Island High Schools. So through this student-driven research program, students and teachers can access BNL's unique facilities to conduct authentic research just like any other visiting scientist. Through the Day in the Life program, which is an environmental conservation program, students collected sediment samples at the different Long Island rivers, streams, and estuaries and provided those sediment samples to our SPARC students today so we can analyze any contaminating microplastics in those sediments. We had to use a calcium chloride solution uh, so that the sample could undergo density separation. That way all of the sediment would remain at the bottom of the beaker or flask and all of the supernatant with the microplastics would rise to the top and then we were able to extract that supernatant and filter that so we had the microplastics and not the sediment. Much of the research through SPARC is carried out at the National Synchrotron Light Source 2, which is a state-of-the-art facility that generates ultra-bright beams of light. We are at the FIS beamline, which stands for Frontier Infrared Spectroscopy. This is an infrared microscope beamline, and so the infrared beamline, so the light from the synchrotron, comes from behind me through this pipe right here. It comes down into the infrared spectrometer. This picks the wavelengths of light that they want to use. And then the sample goes onto the microscope stage and that's where they actually collect the data. I can use the tools here at the NSLS2, like the IR beamline or the IR microscope, to identify the types of plastics that were found in my samples. Every plastic has a different infrared spectrum from another. And so they can really identify to excellent detail which plastic they're finding in the environment. By being able to identify the plastics found on Long Island, we're able to best identify where they're coming from and then try to figure out the best way to prevent the microplastics from getting into the environment. Mm -hmm.